I'm uh, Robert Bowling. I'm the creative strategist at Infinity Ward, and we're going to be looking at Modern Warfare 2. Right now, in Modern Warfare 2, we're towards the end of development. We've been working on this for about two years now. In, in Modern Warfare 2, we've broken the game down into three major sections. You have your single player campaign, which is you know your cinematic experience. You have your multiplayer, but then you have Spec Ops, and it's a completely unique mode. You're going to have game types. Uh, that are unique to it, locations that are unique to it, and, and enemies that you fight that you won't find anywhere else in the game. And special ops, you can play solo, uh, but once you get into the veteran difficulties, it's going to be much harder. Or you can do split screen with a buddy on the couch, or do online co-op with just two players. Well, when you first get Modern Warfare 2, you're only going to have the alpha missions unlocked. And inside there's like five missions that you can do of uh, each one's different on how you complete it. They might be races, they might be wave defense. And once you get a few stars in that by beating it on different difficulties, you'll unlock Bravo and then Charlie, then Delta. And as you unlock more and more, they're going to become increasingly more difficult. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's definitely a co-op mode. So especially in like the race ones, when you're both racing snowmobiles downhill, you're both trying to cross the finish line, but of course you want to get there faster than your buddy so you can shoot him up, make his screen all bloody, try to get him to crash into a tree or something. Yeah, well, we looked at uh, a mission that takes place down in the favela called Takedown. In this, in this one, you're tracking an arms dealer in Rio uh, down in Brazil. So you need to capture his right-hand man so you can get some intelligence from him on where Rojas, the arms dealer, is. Now, while they're getting information, you're going to track him into the favela. But once you get there, he knows you're there. So you clear out some civilians, start making your way through, but then the militia's coming out of the woodwork. I mean, these guys live there, they grew up there, they're not standard military. They're guys who are just there, they got recruited in this militia, so they're not trained military. And you, you can tell that by their tactics. You know, they're using very, like, just shooting around the wall or not aiming what they're doing. Uh, but they know the land, and that's what makes them dangerous, because as you're making your way through, they're climbing up, they're leaping across rooftops, they're getting angles on you and getting up behind you. So you gotta be checking corners as you're making your way up the hill. Yeah, well, I mean, when, we're, when we were making multiplayer for Modern Warfare 2, I mean, Call of Duty 4 became this huge multiplayer hit. So we really wanted to keep the things that everybody loved and that we loved about the first game. So you have your persistent ranking and your XP and your unlocks um, and all that, and then your creative class. But then we want to build on top of that, not only adding a bunch of new weapons and a bunch of new perks, but adding in features that change the way you played multiplayer. And that's where customizable kill streaks came about. I mean, you have 15 new ones to choose from, switch them in and out. You have death streaks, which makes the game more accessible for newer players. But the real important thing was the design philosophy of really rewarding the player for anything they did and however their play style was. So you can go in and play completely defensively, grab a riot shield and just defend the bomb planters or help your guys capture the flag without shooting anybody and you'll be rewarded for that. Or maybe you're the guy who always takes out the helicopter, shoots down the UAV, which you can do now. You know, you're gonna get points for that and, and be specialized for that. I mean, ranking up's extremely important, especially now since you really get recognized for everything you do. You don't get XP just for kills or uh, planning the bomb, you get XP for everything. We haven't announced anything about fan favorites coming back, but I mean, there are a lot of cool Call of Duty 4 maps that we all love. I mean, when we're designing levels, uh, we'll have a general uh, concept of what we want to do in that mission, and we'll, we'll start building it out. We're always watching movies and reading books and just getting inspiration from everywhere, bits and pieces here and there. And you can always see, like, slight fan uh, inspirations that we have for movies. I mean, you know, when you're going down the hill on the, in the snowmobile and you're dodging trees, it's a very Star Wars-esque moment from speeder bikes. And when you're fighting through the gulag in a, in a prison bathroom, you know, a lot of people think of The Rock. And it's you take just bits and pieces of inspiration, but really it comes from all over the place. Well, yeah, well, I mean, with Modern Warfare 2, you know, Day one, we're gonna have 14 million people who are essentially veterans at the game. So the learning curve for a lot of people is much less. So if you're new to the franchise, you really want that ability to get in there and have fun. So death streaks are a cool way to make it accessible for newer players, but can't be abused by the more veteran players. So it's a very r rare basis. I mean, you seriously have to need the handicap to get in there. So if you get like, uh, you die four times in a row without ever getting a kill, you're gonna be awarded this death streak, which gives you a helping hand. Basically puts you in the fight, but isn't gonna make you overpowered compared to somebody who has a lot of skill.
Yeah, I, well, I mean, the story mode has a lot of great actors, and we really focused on character actors that fit the characters we had written. Um, so we focused on that. We have a lot of good people um, in there. And then we also have a lot of really good cameos throughout Spec Ops and multiplayer that you're going to hear in uh, Batter Chatter, but I don't think we're going to be revealing those. Those are, those are Easter eggs we won't ever call out in the game. Like, they'll never be called by their character name or anything. You're just going to have to pick it up. I mean, what, whatever retails do, I mean, they know their audience better than we do, so we would never dictate what a retailer does. I think it's great if people want to give better deals to our community. Early on, we were looking at accessories for Modern Warfare 2 and uh, different companies, and Mad Cats picked it up and wanted to make a controller, so we wanted to customize it based on our players. I mean, we didn't want to just throw our logo on something and put it out there. We wanted to listen to the people who were actually going to enjoy the controller and use it and try to customize the actual hardware based on their feedback. So we added in buttons on the back for people who wanted to be able to melee without you know, losing control of the sticks. And then uh, we were trying to decide, we're, we were making 360 and PS3 ones, so we wanted to know which do people preferred. Like, do PS3 really want convex or do they just do it because that's what the default is? And so uh, we asked the community what they thought and put that feedback into the controller. We, uh, we listened to a lot of feedback from our community on what they wanted from the collector's edition. And a lot of them, you know, they wanted to peep into people's windows. So we thought, how can we come up with a collector's edition that not only represented the game, but also represented our community's need to be perverts. So that's where the night vision goggles came about. It really met that need of being Modern Warfare-esque, but also very focused on perversion. <laughs> it's an important consideration. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we want to appease our fans. <laughs>